Hello everyone, my name is Abhi Bhardwaj and I'm back on lecture series on science. Today's topic is global warming and climate change and I'm going to discuss mostly about Earth's history and how climate has fluctuated in the Earth's history and what lessons we can learn from what happened in the past and apply them in our current computer models to see and predict our future climate. So, you know, this topic is very interesting and it is very close to my heart. Uh, I am an earth scientist, so basically my, my education is in earth science and then I specialized in environmental earth science. So, you know, I've been involved in many discussions where this comes up and, you know, there's a, there's a quite a bit of interest uh, in the scientific community about, uh, about this topic and how we can learn from what happened in the history of the earth and apply that same uh, you know um, principles and conditions on our uh, modern day computer models so um, you know my uh, basic discussion would be on going back in the time and seeing uh, the different time periods of our planet earth and there are particular ones which I'm going to focus. So let's get started. So if you look at Earth, for example, the Earth was, you know, formed around four billion years back. And then if you go up in time scale, the first period is called Precambrian. And then you had Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, and then here, uh, you know, um, I'm going to say this was a Paleozoic era, uh, this is Mesozoic era, and this is Cenozoic era. So these are three different types of eras we, we study in our science. So in the Mesozoic starts from Permian, Triassic, Jurassic and Cretaceous. So if you must be, you know, you, 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 every one of you know about Jurassic, because there's a Jurassic, Jurassic Park movie. So basically, you know, that's about around 250 to 300 million years back. I'm interested more on the Cenozoic era, and I'll tell you why. So Cenozoic starts with Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, and then uh, you have um, Miocene, Pliocene, so Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene, and the and the later latest one is Holocene, and then the current period. But I'm interested in this period right here, Eocene and Paleocene which was about 50 to 55 million years back. And when you go to this period now, what happens? So let me draw another graph here. This side is going to represent the carbon dioxide parts per million, and this is going to be the age. So we are going to back to future, Paleocene, okay, and Eocene. So this is time, and here, so say 50 to 55 million years back, okay? And then, in this time, what happened is, so I'm gonna put here, around here, 400,000 years as well, because that's important for our discussion. So when you, when you look at the carbon dioxide level in this era, Paleocene, between Paleocene and Eocene, the CO2 level rises suddenly rises and then what happened is it raised the temperature about 8 degrees centigrade. What it led to? 50% of the life forms went extinct. Okay, so they got extinct in this time because of the sudden rise in temperature uh, because of the rise in CO2 level. So why this is important to understand? Research after research Scientists have found, geologists have found, and geochemists have found that, that you know, 
after studying different samples from this, this age, and many of them came from Antarctica, so they found out that there was a sudden rise of CO2 level in this time period, and, and basically what it did is it raised the temperature of the Earth 8 degrees centigrade. So why are we interested in learning this? Is that same thing is happening right now. If you look at 2015, for instance, you know, 1 degree Celsius already gone up. And when we look at these numbers, for example, 8 degree doesn't look too much, right? 1 degree doesn't look too much. 8 degree can cause such a devastation that it can take out 50% of the life. So that is how dangerous it is. Even 1 degree going up is very dangerous. So, so 8 degree was big. And there are different theories about what happened at the time. Some people think, the scientists think that they were volcanoes and they raised the CO2 slowly. Others think that comet hit the earth, which brought a lot of CO2 suddenly into the atmosphere and that you know, raised the level of CO2 in the atmosphere and then led to the rise in temperature. But the main point here is that what happens when, when CO2 starts rising? For instance, right now that is what is happening. CO2 is rising right now in the atmosphere. So what happens this time when you go back to, and this is called PETM, Paleocene, Eocene, Thermal Maximus. So Paleocene, Eocene, Thermal Maximus. Very interesting term and very interesting time to study what happened at the time. And so PETM basically is the time when CO2 level was very high and it went suddenly. But when we say suddenly, it still took 20,000 years roughly to rise to that level. And right now when we're looking at Earth, this is happening much faster. And I'll explain to you in a minute how. So it took 20,000 years to go up to that level. And what happened? One thing happens when the temperature starts rising. You have to now know that when we look at our oceans, there's 70% water on Earth, right? Oceans, we have a lot of different life forms on the, in the ocean. And there are microorganisms, there are, you know, fishes, there are different type of life form, much more life form what you find on Earth, in the ocean. What happens when they die, they get deposited here, right? So organic matter gets deposited on the surface of the ocean. And since the sunlight cannot reach here, so the temperature is lower here. And then dying, you know, the dead organic matter produces something called methane, CH4. But the CH4, you know, as age passes, it gets entrapped and stays there at the bottom of the ocean in the layers. And there's a lot of methane gas there. So during this time when we study that there was a temperature rise because of CO2, what happened is that the, t you know, the temperature of the ocean started warming up. It took 20,000 years, but it started warming up. And what it led to is that, you know, the entrapped CH4 was released now. When the temperature went up, you know, because it needs, you know, it cooling conditions here to keep it entrapped. As soon as the temperature starts rising, the CH4 starts coming out from the ocean and goes into the atmosphere. Now what it does is, CH4 is 20, 20 times more potent than CO2. So what happens when, when this goes up, you know, it aids in rising temperature. It, it suddenly starts raising the temperature much more faster speed. And that is the fear. That's what when I think is the biggest fear for me because when you look at current period now, so, so let's go back to 400,000 years here. So if you go back 400,000 years, we had around 160 parts per million CO2 level. And then you come to 1890, the time period say 1890 here, what do you see in the CO2 um, level is 280 part per million. But when you go now to 2016, you see sudden rise in CO2 level to 400 parts 
per million, 400 parts per million. So sunrise from 280 parts per, min, per million from 1890 to 2016. That's a sudden rise in temperature, uh, CO2 level. And what it has caused is one degree Celsius already gone up. And that is the cause of concern for me. Because if we keep on pumping CO2 level, uh, if CO2 gas in the atmosphere and its levels you know, keeps going high and high, what we are leading up to is we're gonna start warming, which already has started, start warming our oceans. And again, there's a lot of methane gas entrapped, which can suddenly start coming out of the oceans now. And since it is 20 times more potent, it's gonna raise the temperature much faster. Much faster than what happened in even PETM. It's gonna be much faster than that because it took 20,000 years at the time. And here, it only not, you know, it didn't even take 200 years here to reach one degree Celsius. So that is my fear is. Now what we need to do to understand this is that, you know, we have to understand our past, you know, apply those conditions. And when we apply these into computer models, we can predict the future. But what we are seeing is that it's gonna be sudden rise of temperature, which if you add this factor of CH4, we do not have too much time to react. So what we need to do is stop pumping CO2. We have to at least stop it. Because if we don't take any action, we're gonna be much worse than what we were 55 million years back in Paleocene time. We are writing the end of the humanity this way and many of other many other life forms on this planet. So we need to address this CO2 problem very quickly. Not only that, other gases, for example, carbon dioxide is about 80% contributor, right? Then we have methane, which is very extremely potent, 20 times more potent gas, right? And then we have nitrous oxide, which is 300 times more potent, right? So than carbon dioxide. So we need to address these and make sure that we stop polluting our planet as soon as possible. Because if we didn't take any action, we are already too late now. So my, you know, conclusion on this is that this has to be taken extremely seriously. And when we look at the history of the earth, which tells us that we, you know, we have seen 50% life form disappearing from this planet. And we cannot afford that. And, you know, this is going to be, the humanity is going to be the worst affected this time. So what we need to do is take action. Every government has to step up, you know, their programs that they make sure that there's zero, you know, zero carbon dioxide addition to the atmosphere. If you cannot reach that level, if you can't do that, at least try to bring it down. And, we, you know, so, so more battery operated cars to, you know, the thermal plants, which use a lot of coal, produce a lot of carbon dioxide. If you go to developing countries like China, you know, they're polluting really badly and nobody cares. But this, this is going to affect the entire planet. It's not a country problem, it's a, it's a planet problem. So, so my conclusion is that we have to look at the history, we have to create a computer model based on the history and predict the future, but we need to take this action as soon as possible to curb the introduction of CO2 into the atmosphere as much as possible. Thank you for watching.